Sierra Rhodes, Gregory Bowers, Dasha Antipova, Stephanie Jockman, Kevin Mahoney, Jack Dickens, Geraldine Paredes, Max Morinelli, Irene Orisha, Andel Husbands. Tuesday, April 25th, 2017. Coming to you from the beautiful University of South Florida campus in Tampa, it's USF Housing Live. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome, we're back. This is the next episode of USF Housing Live. My name is Gregory Bowers with Housing and Residential Education here at the beautiful University of South Florida in Tampa. We are the best place to live, the best place to work, and the best place to learn. We've got a wonderful lineup of guests joining us tonight. And of course, as always, we're ready to answer your questions live during the show. Go ahead, type them in the comments. They'll send them to me right here on the set, and we'll answer you in real time. Let's go ahead and meet our panel. We're going to have Dave Kloiber from Housing Assignments. Welcome back, Dave. Thank you, Greg. It's good to be back. Glad to have you here. We also have Cord McLean from the Center for Leadership and Civic Engagement. Welcome, Cord. Thank you, Greg. Glad to be here. Glad to have you. And of course, last but not least, we have another newcomer, Alfredo Oliveira from Academic Initiatives in Housing and Residential Education. Welcome, Alfredo. Thanks, Greg. Glad to be here. Well, we're glad to have you. And I've got a million one questions for you. You ready to get started? I'm ready. Let's do it. First up, who are you and what do you do here? So my name is Alfredo Oliveira. I'm a coordinator for Academic Initiatives in Residential Education. So what we do, we oversee the 12 living learning communities we currently have. And we also do programming throughout the year to um, support student success at the University of South Florida. And so tell me, what are some of the academic initiatives that we host in our department? We have several, so I'm going to highlight four of them. Uh, we start the year with house calls, which we have faculty, staff, and administrators actually come to the residence halls to meet our students. So they knock at the doors and welcome students to the GOSF. We are a community and network, and we are happy to have them here. Uh, we also have... Um, Finals reviews, fall and spring, where your faculty members uh, give finals reviews to students so they can do better in the final exams. We have Achievable, it's a program for students who didn't do so well in the fall, so we prepare, prep them for the spring semester so they can really uh, excel. And then we also have Just Desserts to recognize students who um, did really well at living in the residence halls. So we, like last year, this year, actually have more than 1,278 students get 3.75 or higher who lived in the residence halls, just people who lived in the residence halls. That's fantastic. And so that sounds like a good testament to live on campus. Yes, are we for right? sure. Yes, you are right. <laughs> um, so tell me, what has been your favorite part of working in academic initiatives? Um, I started here last May, and I think my favorite thing is the ability to be creative. I create a new program called Alfredo with Alfredo. So I actually make Alfredo pasta and I serve to the students while doing a wor workshop about time management and vision planning for the year. That's awesome. You cook it yourself? I cook myself. So the new bowls coming in, I'm going to do one in the fall and the summer. They should come to the event. That's awesome. Well, thank you. Um, can you tell us um, really, how does your unit support student success at our university? Besides our Beyond Our Annual events, we also have uh, faculty in residence and faculty fellows. So we have three faculty in residence who help the community they, where they live in, and they do like many events with the students. And faculty fellows are faculty members who do not live in the residence halls, but they come in throughout the year to do events with that community. What's the big advantage of having faculty fellows and faculty in residence? I think one of our goals is to show that faculty members and the professors are also individuals like us. They also have families, they also have, um, they also go to the grocery store, they also have to pay bills. So living in the, re the residence halls allows them to connect with the students and show that just like they live in the residence halls, the other faculty members are just people and students can connect with them. That's awesome. Um, so what's your favorite academic initiative here? Uh, it's a tough one, but I think house calls, it's my favorite one. Uh, it's the first one we do in the beginning of the year. And we are able to connect so many people across campus and staff to come to the residence halls and greet students. They're knocking at the doors, they're talking to students, they're giving them um, giving resources to make students successful. So really set 
new bulls um, to be successful at the University of South Florida. Awesome. And just to let folks know, I see questions are already coming in. That's great. If we don't answer you right now, know that they're probably a Dave question, and we'll be getting to those a little later in the program. So keep those questions coming. Um, I want to circle back to our faculty. Uh, what are some of the highlights you'd like to share with us about uh, what programs faculty put on, how they engage with our residents? Yeah, so right now, Professor Kanos, she teaches accounting, and she does a money talk workshop. So she actually helps students who live in the residence halls to set up a budget for the year. So we know they all get their financial aid paychecks uh, or their refund in September or so. So we help, she sit, sits down with them to help them plan for that money. So students don't take more money out than the, what they need. Uh, Dr. Brown makes, then is the fun ones too, he makes uh, Dr. Brown brownies. So every week he does, he makes brownies and serves to the students. Dr. Mackay does a star party. So outside Beta Hall, right here on campus, he brings his astro tools and then he looks at stars and the earth and the moon. So all very interesting activities where you can connect academics with social and then really give a resident who lives here at the University of South Florida a unique experience. And so talking about Dr. Mackay's program there, do they have to be an astronomy major or can any resident attend that? No, any resident can attend that. So Dr. Mackay right now is assigned to um, Maple. He lives in Maple Hall, but he does events with Beta. He invites all the residents. So you don't have to live in that community to come. Everyone is welcome. Well, Alfredo, thank you so much for joining us on the program tonight. I hope we'll have you back soon. Thank you, Greg. It was so fun. Thank All you. All right, great. We look forward to having you back. And thank so you. we're going to be uh, taking a short break. We've got a couple of videos to show you. I know you're going to love them. One of them is about Bull Hall. Mm, I've said too much. But Cor McLean is going to be joining us next. More USF Housing Live coming your way right after this. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm a part of this really cool organization where we have all these international students and we all come together and we're like, try again, not good enough. I've been doing animation for like three years. Do you really spend all of your time behind a computer? I really like traveling. I think that's like one of No. Hey, ready to go to Bullhall? Wait, what? Dasha, right? Are you an international student? I love your name. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm from Russia. I can tell you all about it. Let's go! Let's do this! We have about 475 student athletes on 19 varsity teams. The Student Bulls Club is the philanthropic arm of our Bulls Club and what they really work to do is to try to create uh, opportunities to raise money for scholarships for our student athletes. Because you get to, to go to football games, you get to go to baseball games, and you, know, you always get better seating than everybody else. So, and every coach here wants the Student Bulls Club to come out and support them. So as we build our fan base, and if we're going to really make this a home field advantage, that the Student Bulls Club is a big part of it. I love working with student athletes who have huge dreams. Dreams so big it makes other people uncomfortable. I love it when a student comes forward and says, I want to change the world, I want to do something great. But don't forget, there's more than just learning in the classroom. It's about learning how to be a great person and to develop incredible social skills. And I think the best way to do that is to get out and meet new people, try new things, do things you didn't expect to do when you got to college. Athletics is a great way to meet people, make new friends, and cheer on the Bulls as we go on to try to win some more conference championships. USF is the best kept secret in the United States of America. I promise you, if you come down to campus, see how beautiful this campus is, meet the professors, see how great this research institution is, I promise you, you'll come away impressed and really proud that your son and daughter is going to be a USF Bull. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Gregory Bowers with Housing and Residential Education. Joining us now is Cord McLean from the Center for Leadership and Civic Engagement. Cord, tell me, who are you and what do you do here? 
Awesome. Well, I'm Corey McLean. I have the opportunity to lead um, a dynamic team of professional and graduate and student staff in our Center for Leadership and Civic Engagement here at the University of South Florida. And so in my role and in our role uh, as a center, we um, put on a number of programs that are helping to develop um, awesome student leaders on our campus, um, student organizations here at USF, and then also give back to our community through service initiatives. Awesome. Thank you. And so everyone knows as you're watching, we are live right now. If you have a question, type in the comments. They'll send it to me right here on the set. We'll answer you in real time. So, Cord, tell me more about what happens in the Center for Leadership and Civic Engagement or the CLCE. Yeah, absolutely. So, a lot happens. Sometimes I wonder what doesn't happen um, in our office. We have um, a dynamic team, like I said, that is putting on a number of programs, a number of services and opportunities. And we have workshops that are happening um, on a weekly basis where we provide um, lunch to students who can come and learn about um, a leadership topic for the week. And we have service opportunities that are happening on a regular basis, so students are going out um, in the local community to nonprofits, to schools, um, giving back to the Tampa Bay community. Um, we also have large days of service, so events like CHARGE, which is a um, first year um, service initiative in a student's um, fall semester, um, where we go out and give um, back in a large group um, to our community. And then Stampede of Service, which is um, an all-campus event, faculty, staff, students um, going out into the Tampa Bay area to give back um, and really embody USF's value of selfless service. Awesome. And what other ways can students become involved with the CLCE? Absolutely. So I think the first thing that I would encourage students to do is come visit us. We are on the first and third floor of the Marshall Student Center, um, or the MSC. And so students can come and check us out, see what opportunities are available to them through all of the flyers and posts that are on our walls and our windows, um, meet some of the students and staff who are putting on these initiatives. Um, I would also encourage students to check out Bull Scene, which is our one-stop shop for um, engagement and involvement on campus. So they can log on to usf.edu slash bullsync once they are here to uh, learn about all the service opportunities that are available, to find a student organization that interests them, um, or just to check out the events calendar here um, at USF. Awesome. Uh, so a strong culture of volunteerism here on campus. What about leadership opportunities? Sure. So we have a number of opportunities for students to develop as leaders here on campus from um, our lunchtime leadership series workshop, um, our leadership challenge conference, um, we have uh, a co-curricular certificate called the Certified Student Leader Program. Um, students can join this program and in three semesters of workshops, of seminars, of classes and service um, can, can get a certi certificate excuse me, in, in leadership and be certified student leaders um, by the end of that program. Um, we have student organizations, like I said, that we oversee and so students can join committees, um, can join uh, different organizations and put on programs here on campus and really develop a lot of um, good leadership skills through those initiatives as well. Awesome. Now, we have a lot of first time in college students watching and their families and so one thing they might want to know is more about your living learning community, the Leadership LLC. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so after a student's first year here at USF, they have the opportunity to move into our second year living learning community, which is really focused on developing strong student leaders here on campus. And so within this community, it's a very immersive experience. Students get to um, network and live with students who are aspiring to be leaders and change agents on our campus and in our community. Um, again, students can also work toward the Certified Student Leader Program certificate um, through their living learning community and participate in a number of workshops and programs um, and events that that are put on by their peers. So let's say a student, they want to join the Leadership LLC in their sophomore year. Uh, what is the emergency, uh, excuse me, the Emerging Leaders Institute? How does that play a role to get them ready? Yeah, so the Emerging Leaders Institute is a program for first year students here on campus. Um, students should be looking out for those applications um, in the summer and fall. Um, we select about 60 students to come out with us to Rotary Camp Florida in February for a weekend retreat um, helping students think about their leadership styles, think about how they can contribute to leadership and change they want to see on our campus, um, and then develop their leadership philosophy and definitions, all while building um, great networks, great friendships, um, and thinking about their um, trajectory here at USF. And so um, that is, again, about 60 students who are coming out to their retreat that is planned, that is coordinated, um, and run by student leaders. So sophomores, juniors, and seniors are investing their entire year in planning this Emerging Leaders Institute um, for their peers. That's awesome. I like how you put that, thinking about their trajectory once they're here. Um, so before we get here, though, we have to transition. So what advice do you have for our incoming first-time in college students? What's going to help them transition successfully from high school to the college experience? Yeah, I would challenge students to think about um, 
start thinking about now what you want to get involved with, right? Um, research shows that students who are uh, plugged into campus, who find community, who find something that interests them, um, are more likely to um, find community, find home, and to be successful um, academically and professionally on campus. And so start thinking about what interests you have coming into the university and seek out ways to find those things here at USF. Um, but also think about things that um, are different. Be, don't be afraid to step outside of your comfort zone. Um, maybe try something that you've been thinking about or wanted to try. College is the opportunity to um, to do that, absolutely. All right, Cordwell, thank you so much. I've been getting a lot of questions, most all Dave questions, and Dave time is coming soon. But I have a question I'm not sure if anyone can answer, but I'm going to throw it out there. Pierre would like to know, can an international student like me join the ROTC Army for two years? And if the answer is yes, can you join during sophomore and junior year, for example? Does anyone happen to know the answer to that question? That's a tough one. A thousand dollars to whoever can get it right. <laughs> Monopoly money. It's Monopoly money. All the students seem to know the answer now. It would require citizenship. Okay, and so that would be my guess. And but, so, or at least a green card. Okay. So. Great. So, what I would recommend then is um, students out there considering ROTC, international or domestic, Google is your friend because we're a big institution. So, go ahead and Google USF ROTC. That'll take you right to the correct pages with all the information you need. Cord, thank you so much for joining us on the program tonight. Thank you. Okay, we have to go back again Absolutely. soon? Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Awesome. All right. And so uh, we're going to take another break. It's a year with Celeste, another installment of our freshman documentary series, and the next, the incredible Dave Kluber. More USF Housing Live coming your way right after this. Um, so for homecoming week, I attended the parade, the football game, and then the dance. The homecoming ball is really fun to go out with um, a group of girls from my hall and to dress up and um, listen to music and stuff. It was really fun to take a break. And um, yeah, we all got ready together and we all walked over there together and got dinner after. So. The parade was my favorite event at for homecoming week just because um, like I wasn't really sure what to expect and it was really like loud. I loved like the band coming in and playing and like all the creative like crazy floats and all the people throwing beads. It was really fun. <laughs> I didn't know it would like be so exciting and like such like a big community. I kind of thought that it would just kind of like be a few events, but it was like a lot to go to and get involved with. So it was really fun. Going to all the homecoming festivities really helps like helps everyone feel like they're a part of a, like a larger community. It like gets you out there with like upperclassmen and more students. And um, it's just cool to like cheer on the bulls all together. <laughs> it really makes you feel like you're really in college. <laughs> And we are back, everyone. For those of you just joining us, I'm Gregory Bowers. You're not. And this is Dave Kloiber from Housing Assignments. Hey, Dave. How are you doing, Greg? Happy birthday. Oh, thank you very much. It is my birthday. I am 24 years old today. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, but I have to say, I couldn't imagine any better way to spend it than with all of you uh, watching tonight. We're so happy to serve you in this capacity. Dave, I've got a million one questions for you. Are you ready to get going? I am. All right, let's light this candle. Here we go. So, Dave, Jasmine would like to know... When do summer students get their housing assignments? Well, we've already started doing assignments for summer A, summer C, and summer AB, and we'll start doing the summer B assignments right after we open for summer A, AB, and C. That was very confusing. Okay, so for <laughs> our incoming first time in college students, those starting in summer, they all start summer B, of course, some are SSS Correct. and some are ACE. So do we have a date on that? Um, I don't have an exact date, but I would say probably um, on or around the 22nd of May, we'll start doing those assignments, if not a little, maybe a week earlier. Okay. And like you shared, we have the other assignments to get to first right. because those students start sooner, and so we've got to address them first, right? Three, two weeks, I think. Three weeks they start. Okay. So, yeah, so. we'll be handling them, and then <laughs> summer B. Yes. Uh, okay. Celeste would like to know, how can my student find out if the LLC he wants to apply to is already full? Uh, they're asking about the pre-nursing LLC, so they want to apply, but they wonder, is it full or not? Uh, do you know that? Does Alfredo know that? Let's I'll see let if Alfredo, Alfredo can take that. that. Yeah. That's a great question for him. We, my understanding is they're not full yet, so the student can go ahead and apply. The application is in the housing portal, and we are still accepting applications for the pre-nursing LLC. Okay, so. so if they want to be in the pre-nursing LLC, the answer is apply. Apply right now. 
Right, right. Well, not right now. In 11 minutes, apply. But you better keep watching USF Housing Live. Thank you, Alfredo. Other spots available, yes. Awesome. Um, I got another question here. Nicholas would like to know, oh, oh, when will we find out about summer housing roommates? And so that's pretty much the same, same yeah. thing, right? Yeah, when we do the assignment, the roommate will be, information will be available on the housing portal as well. Dave, how about you tell them, how do they find out who their roommates are? How do they get that information once they've been assigned or selected a space? Sure. Um, Anybody can go into the housing portal, look at their future assignment, and their future assignment will include uh, where they're living and what their mailbox information is, if they want to receive mail over the summer or over the fall. And uh, below that, they'll also see who's assigned with them in their room or their suite or their apartment. And what do they do, though, if it has a name but no contact information? I've heard about that. Oh. Is, is life over? What do we do? Life isn't over. Um, Unfortunately, uh, uh, not everybody wants to have their information shared with their roommate right away, but you've got their name. And so maybe they're active on our groups. So check the group and see if they're put out a, a question. Hey, is someone such out there? And maybe you can connect with them through the group. And uh, if not, uh, hopefully they'll contact you because you put your information out there, hopefully. That's excellent. Yeah, so that person can see your contact information. And so I think for some students, they don't really think about that. And they say, set it to private and realize no one can talk to me, right? right. So uh, it doesn't mean they don't like you. I'm sure you're a wonderful person. And so we all are deep down inside. So don't let that dissuade you if you don't have the contact information. But of course, you might end up taking an extra fridge to school. That could happen. And so uh, if that does happen, my office is close by. I will take it off your hands, OK? Or maybe Dave will. Dave's taller I've got one. and stronger. Oh, Dave already has one? I've got one. Dave will take your stuff. Um, <laughs> so uh, next question here. This is actually asking about when we choose where we live for summer. So when is a student eligible to choose their room, either for summer or fall? Boy, for, for summer, where uh, we've done something new for fall. So I'll start with fall. Okay. If your application is complete and you've done all the steps required, which is pay the application fee, you have your immunizations all submitted and approved. You have your orientation registration complete. Then actually you are eligible to go in and actually select your room. So you can log in now if all that's complete and go select your room. And if you have roommate information like their roommate, their UID and their PIN number and they're all set, you can actually go in and select for them as well or vice versa, they can select for you. Now for the summer, we didn't want to bite off more than we can chew. Uh, this is a new process with allowing our new students to select their room initially online. And so we only did it for fall, but fall has already started. So if you're already assigned for fall and it's one of our open summer buildings, we're going to do our best to put you into the same room for a summer that you're in for fall. Great, thank you. And so let's say a student's starting in summer B. Do they just do the summer B housing application or is there an additional step they need to follow? They definitely, if, they're, if you're starting for summer B and you want to live on campus for the fall, do the fall spring application as well because if you, if you wait, you're not going to maybe get the room that you want and then we're going to be assigning you because we only have our room selection process open until the end of June. Okay, great. Another question just came in. Shreya would like to know, I'm having a tough time deciding whether or not to apply for the Honors LLC. My current roommate isn't in the program, so I'm wondering if it's worth leaving her to join the LLC. Could you give me some information, benefits about the Honors LLC? Uh, Alfredo, can you help us with that? Yes, definitely. My suggestion to the student would be apply to the Honors LLC. They are coming to the University of South Florida, so they'll be able to connect, have lunch together, go to events together. The Honors LLC provides a unique experience, so I think the student, uh, my suggestion is apply for the Honors LLC is a great opportunity, even though your friend won't be there. Besides actually um, the student living the Honors LLC, making friends there, then she can meet her friends, friends from the other community. So it even creates a better network across the university. So my suggestion is to go up ahead, apply to live in the Honors LLC. Great advice. Thank you. Get in there and apply in seven minutes. Okay, excellent. Um, got another question here. Gloria I would like to know, is there any way that we can visit and see our room before we move in? Wow. Um, we do offer tours during orientation. Uh, we will not, however, show you your exact room. And if you're going to be living in Beacon or Summit, which are new, our two new facilities opening up this fall, they actually won't open up until August 17th. And so there's no way we can show even what that style will look like, except uh, as a picture or a rendering on uh, our website or in one of our brochures. Okay. But uh, you can certainly get a feel for the room type by um, 
just take one of those tours during orientation. Great, thank you. Uh, and Isabella is asking, when will we know our roommate by? And so, for oh. summer, when are they going to know their roommate? As soon as you're assigned and your roommate's assigned, it'll be right there under future assignments. There you go. And so, for fall, when will they know? For fall, if, if you've assigned yourself already, you can go under future assignments and take a look right now, and more than likely, you've got a roommate already. Awesome. Well, Dave, thank you so much for joining us. I look forward to having you back soon. It's been great being here, and congratulations also on your 20th episode. Oh, well, thank you very much. That's right. This has been 20 episodes, and we've got a whole lot more show coming your way. A few videos for you and another installment of A Year with Endell coming your way. More USF Housing Live after this. Beta Hall and Castor Hall are our two traditional style residence halls, each designed with two wings per floor. Castor houses approximately 360 residents, and Beta houses about 280. Both halls are co-ed and exclusive to first-year students. Beta and Castor are located in the Argos area and are very close to the Fresh Food Company Dining Hall and the Marshall Student Center. On the south side of Castor is the Castor Beach, which features white sands, hammocks for relaxing, and umbrellas to shade residents from the warm Florida sun. On the south side of Beta, there are volleyball and basketball courts, which residents can be seen enjoying day and night. Each wing shares a common bathroom, which is cleaned daily. There are also accessible bathrooms for those who need them. Laundry facilities are located on the first floor, where residents can pay with change or bull bucks to use the washers and dryers. Each floor has a kitchen, where residents have access to a stove and oven. Study lounges are located on every floor. There are a number of common spaces throughout the buildings for residents to hang out and socialize. Beta and Castor feature mainly double occupancy rooms with two beds, desks, chairs, and dressers. Visit usf.edu slash housing to learn more and apply to live on campus. I decided to join an intramural sport because it's an easy way to connect with your friends that I might not be able to see every day. I've played intramural sports every semester since I've been here. I took part in flag football, volleyball, soccer, basketball, and they were all tons of fun. Um, the team atmosphere, it's just intramural sports, so there's not too much pressure. It's just like all of us, just, we're just there to have fun and just have a good time with each other. So if someone messes up, we won't go too hard on them. It's just, we're just there for fun. Most times uh, the intramural games would be at night so it's just good to like look forward to having a game where you can just go and relieve all the stress that you built up during the week and just let it all out on the field. There were flyers around the school like stuck up like sign up for this sign up for that and me and I have a group of friends and we just decided hey why not like we even played a sport that we never played before which was flag football. It didn't go too well but it was still tons of fun because it was all of us together. Um, if you intend on joining intramural sports, I suggest gathering your team early and signing up as soon as you can because sports fill up really quickly. So as soon as you decide you want to do it, hop on it. Even if you've never played it before, I suggest you still take part. It's a great experience. All right, everyone, welcome back. I'm Gregory Bowers with Housing and Residential Education. We are the best place to live, the best place to work, and the best place to learn. That just about does it for all of us. But something we want to remind you about is that everyone is welcome on our campus, no matter who you are. Take a moment and think about the people in your life who helped you get to where you are today. I'm sure they're quite proud to see you get ready to embark on this experience that is the University of South Florida. We can't wait to meet each and every one of you. Our next episode is going to be on Monday, May 9th at 6 p.m. right here on Facebook and on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash USF Housing. It's going to be great. We're going to have a lot of great experts to answer all of your questions live during the show. I want to take a moment and say thank you to all of our guests, Dave, Cord, and Alfredo. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I hope to have you all back again soon. And also a special thank you to our student crew who is always amazing. Oh my goodness, the energy is so crazy. So, so, so happy to have you all here. Thank you so much. Again, Monday, May 9th, 6 p.m., join us. And of course, there is just one last thing. Go Bulls! We'll see you next time.